Welcome back. I'm Robert Breaker, and every week I have a new sermon in both English and in Spanish. I post those sermons to YouTube and Vimeo, and I put on there a list on the website, thecloudchurch.org, for you to be able to find those videos. I've been excited about this week because I've been looking forward to this for some time. I had announced back in uh, the beginning of 2018 that I had wanted to do this sermon. And uh, I got, got a couple weeks off in the beginning for the first time in three years. We got two weeks off in the beginning of 2018. So when we came back in January, I, I preached a couple messages and I said, I really want to preach this one soon. Well, as, as I speak here now, it is the very beginning of March of 2018. So this message has kind of been on the back burner for the last two months, really. And um, I'm excited now to be able to finally give this message. Now, I thought about, man, I, I want to go into detail. I want to give so many details on this message. But then I thought, you know, maybe I'll just present it and let you fill in the blanks. <laughs> uh, I could give a lot of illustrations, a, a lot of uh, different things that I'd like to give to prove the point. But my desire today is just simply put it out there, let you know what it is, and then let you read in the scriptures and let you look daily at what you see in the news and then see if you don't agree with what I'm saying today. I really want to preach the Word of God, not my opinion today. So I want to give you what the Bible says about it. And I want to talk today about the Antichrist agenda, the agenda of the devil, the Antichrist, what he is doing and wants to do and what is his goal, what is his plan, and how he is using certain people to bring about an agenda which is diabolical, which is satanic, which is evil and ungodly. This is called the Antichrist agenda. Turn with me, if you would, to Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. And while you're turning to Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, I'll go ahead and write up here what I usually write every week. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. And boy, do I have a lot to talk about today, and I can't wait to get to it. Um, I want you to see some things. I think the problem with the church today is that they're blind, and they don't see certain things. So we need to see some things. We need to understand some things. A while back, I preached a message entitled, Do You Know the Enemy? And a lot of people said, Brother Breaker, that was a great, great message. As you showed from the Bible, who the true enemy of Christ is. Well, today we're going to look at, again, the enemies of Christ, those that are anti-Christ, because that's what anti-Christ is. It's against Christ, anti-Christ. And we're going to look at the agenda of those that are against Christ. So Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, I'm just going to read the very beginning of this verse. It says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, of course, this is an Old Testament verse speaking about the, ch the, the children of God or the people of God, Israel, in the Old Testament. And it's talking about how they, Israel, God's chosen people, were destroyed because they didn't know something. You know, there's something that we need to know. The Bible talks about knowledge. The Bible talks about how important it is to know certain things. Uh, a week or two ago, I preached about salvation and how you have to know something before you can get saved. And God says you need to know and understand the gospel. So I want to give you something today. I want to teach you something. And, and uh, there's some things that I believe you need to know about what's happening in the world and why the world is going the way it is. I get phone calls. I get emails all the time from people. And they tell me, Brother Breaker, I don't know what planet I'm on. I don't know what country I'm in anymore. This world is not the same world that I was born into. It's changed so much and gone so far the wrong way. Every day I wake up and I hear something in the news and I say, What is going on? I don't understand. They say, What's wrong with my country? What is going on? And I say, Well, if you know the Antichrist agenda, you can see it plainly. And so I don't want you to be someone that just stands around going, What? I want you to say, Oh. Oh, so that's why they do this. Oh, so that's why he said that. Oh, so that's why they're doing it. And then you'll get the idea, and you'll understand the agenda. So today I want to give you knowledge. I want to present to you the agenda of the devil, or the Antichrist. Because when you know this, then you'll know why the world is the way it is today. And today we're going to look at the Antichrist agenda. The word Antichrist only appears four different times in the King James Bible. Now, the man who is the Antichrist appears more than that in other passages, but the actual word itself, Antichrist, only appears four times. 
And oddly enough, those four times that the word Antichrist appears, they always appear in the writings of John. They're found in 1 John and 2 John. We're going to turn there. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18. And what I want to do today is I want to show you that the term Antichrist, Antichrist applies, the term, the word Antichrist applies to three things. So it has a triple application, this word Antichrist. And I want you to understand that. There's so much that you need to know and, and get a hold of. And I'll show you what these three things are after we read these scriptures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the four verses in which the word Antichrist is in the Bible. And, and it might scare you. <laughs> I hope not. I hope you're saved. If you're saved, this shouldn't scare you. But if you're lost, you should be scared. You should be scared to know that there is a devil who is actively working with an agenda to take over the world. And that's what the agenda is. And bring in pure wickedness and evil. All right, 1 John 2.18 is the first time we see Antichrist, the actual word itself. 1 John 2.18 says, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So here the Apostle John says, look, there will be a time when the Antichrist shall come, future. I believe that's the guy in the tribulation, and I'll write that up here in a second. But he says, but now there are many Antichrist. And he's writing way back here, closer to the time of Christ. So he's saying, all throughout the church age, there have been Antichrists, or people who are against Christ, false people, uh, many of them in a church, claiming to be Christians, but yet they weren't. They were really against Christ. They were deceivers and liars. The second time is 1 John 2.22. It says, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Okay, so whoever denies the Father and the Son is an Antichrist, and he is a liar. Hmm, who does that? A lot of different denominations in the world, so-called religions, that deny that there is a Father and a Son. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 3 is another passage. 1 John 4, 3. Again, we see the term Antichrist. 1 John 4, 3 says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Now he's talking about spirits. What kind of spirits are those? Why, they're demons. They're devils. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. So there is a spirit of the Antichrist, and it's already in the world. Again, he's writing toward the early part of the church, and he's saying, yeah, there, the Antichrist spirit is alive and well in the day that this was written. Just as, as much as it is alive today. And there's a spirit connected with it, and it's the spirit of demons, spirit of the devil. There are all these demons that are running around in the spirit world working toward an agenda for Satan. Now let's go to 2 John 1, 7 for the fourth time that we find the word Antichrist in the Bible. 2 John, verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is deceiver and an Antichrist. So there is the Antichrist, then there are an Antichrist. There are Antichrists. And then we have spirits of Antichrist. So there are three different applications of Antichrist. First of all, the Antichrist is a specific man who's to come in the future. I believe that that's talking about the Antichrist who comes in the tribulation period. So there will be the Antichrist, a man, specific man, who the Bible calls the son of, uh, he calls him the man of sin, and then the son of perdition. He's got two names. So when the Bible talks about the Antichrist, it's talking about a specific man who's to come in the tribulation period and rule over the earth. It's talking about the spirit of the Antichrist. There is a spirit of the Antichrist. And I believe that's connected with devils or demons. And those spirits are working today. And they usually possess people. And the people that they possess work for a specific purpose. purpose and that purpose is working toward taking over the world so that when the Antichrist, this man, does come, he will have the whole world. The last thing is there's a society or a people who are Antichrist. So there are people who are 
anti-Christ. What does anti-Christ mean? It means against Christ. So in the Bible, we clearly through it see that when the Bible uses the term antichrist, it applies to three things. It, it, it applies to the future coming man who will rule in the, in the tribulation period over the earth after the rapture. Here's the rapture, this arrow pointing up. It applies to the spirits of the antichrist, or the demons that are helping to bring about this, this kingdom of the antichrist. And it applies to certain people who are antichrist, who are being used and led by Satan to bring in the kingdom of Satan. So, here we have one, two, and three. The number one is right here. This right here is the time when the Antichrist rules the man. But this guy's writing back here, this guy John, and notice what he says. He says, there's the spirit of Antichrist, and he says that in his day. So in the day in which he lives, he says, watch out, because the spirit is already working. There are demonic spirits in the world today that are working toward the goal and the agenda of the Antichrist. And then he says, and also, there are Antichrists already in the world today. So all the way back towards the time of Christ, to the end of the tribulation period, we see that the Antichrist is working toward an agenda. He's working hard to get his agenda. To be Antichrist is to be pro Luciferian or pro Satan. It's to be against Christ. That's what Antichrist means. Against Christ. Who is Christ? Well, let me just say it up here. Christ is Jesus. So to be against Jesus is to be Antichrist. So anybody, it doesn't matter who they are, if they are against Jesus Christ, they are part of the society and the spirit of the Antichrist. And they are working, whether they know it or not, to help bring in the Antichrist in his kingdom in which he'll rule according to the Bible for seven years in the tribulation period. Jesus said in Matthew 12 30, he that is not with me is against me. You see it's not uh, something where you can just sit out on the sidelines and just watch and say hmm interesting God versus Satan. No you choose. You have to choose a side. Are you on the side of Christ are you on the side of the devil, Satan, Lucifer, that old serpent, the dragon, and Satan? You choose a side. And so which side are you on? Jesus said, if you're not with me, you're against me. You are an antichrist. You are part of the antichrist. Now, the antichrist is going to have a kingdom. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. Let me read to you what the Bible says. Again, the word antichrist only appears four times. But the Bible speaks about the antichrist many times. There's lots of places in the Bible where it actually talks about the Antichrist. And the Apostle Paul, our Apostle, talks about the Antichrist in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's begin reading there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. When are we gathered unto him? Well, that's the rapture. We who are saved will leave at the rapture before the Antichrist gets his kingdom. But yet, the Bible is very clear that he's already working now toward the goal of that kingdom. So the spirit of Antichrist is working already. And I'm going to show you by the end of this message what it is so you can recognize it and identify it. So he says, Our gathering together unto him, verse 2, that you, sh you be not sin shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit, neither by word, neither by letter as us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So the Antichrist has two names. He's called the son of perdition, and he's called the man of sin. But he's called the man of sin first, and his other name is son of perdition. And I believe, and I don't have time to get into this, that when he starts, he's just the man. And he's a sinful man, that's why he's called the man of sin. In the middle of the tribulation, he's assassinated, he's killed. And he comes back to life literally with Satan incarnate inside of him which is the name Son of Perdition, and that's what that applies to. We're going to read some of Revelation here in a little bit that will talk a little bit about that deadly wound. And so he says here that there will be a falling away, and then the man of sin will be revealed. Verse 4, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. What is the ultimate goal of the Antichrist? To say he's God and have the whole world worship him as God. That's his goal. That's his agenda. And that's what he's working to. And to get that agenda, why, he's got to get rid of Christ. Well, the way to get rid of Christ is to get rid of Christianity. 
Get rid of true Christians. Verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? 6, And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. Okay, who is this? This is the Antichrist that it's talking about in the passage here. And verse 7 says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only who, who now, he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed. The Antichrist is the wicked one. He's wicked as hell. He is ungodly, filthy, reprobate, wicked. That's why it's called a man of sin. He's sinful. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now when does that take place? The battle of Armageddon, seven years later, after he's revealed. And it says here in verse 9, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all, lying, with all power and signs and lying wonders. I think it's interesting how the devil or the Antichrist comes in. He has power, he has signs, and he has lying wonders. Why power, that sounds like government, so he must have governments in his favor. Signs, well that sounds like religion, so he must have all religions in his favor. Lying wonders, well that sounds like the media. <laughs> Every day we look at the news media and we see all the lies and all the wonders that they give us that aren't, aren't true. Verse 10, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. 11, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. 12, That they, all, that they should believe a lie and that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So the Antichrist is against Christ. Well, Jesus Christ is truth. So what does that make the Antichrist? Lie. He's full of lies. He's a liar. And he comes in power by preaching and teaching lies, and he gets the world to follow him by believing his lies. He's a liar. He's a liar. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 13. Now, this is speaking about this coming Antichrist who will come and reign in the tribulation. I want you to see what the Bible says about him, and then I'm going to show you how he's going to work and his agenda. Revelation chapter 13, I've been studying this for, like I said, over two months now, and uh, there's a lot to it, and, and I only have so much time to get into it. So, like I said, I, I can't go as in detailed as I want to. All I can do is throw this out here and then say, now you do a little bit further study and see if you think that what I'm saying is right. I'm showing you scripture, but what's amazing is that we are in these last days. We are very close to the rapture. And so every day when you turn on the news, you see more and more and more. And you say, oh, that's his agenda. Oh, that's it. That's him working to get his... What? And so we can see this firsthand. It's just an amazing time to live in the last days where we can actually see this agenda being put into practice. So that means the rapture is soon, and I can't wait. The sooner Jesus comes, the better. So, Revelation chapter 13, we're going to read here verse 1 uh, on down. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. This is the Antichrist, he's called the beast. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now the dragon is Satan, so Satan gives this man, the man of sin, his power and his authority to take over the world. Three, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. So this is when the beast is, is killed. He's given a deadly wound, and yet he's brought back to life. Verse four, and they worshiped the dragon which gave power to the beast. Well, that, that's Satan. So the whole world during this time, during the tribulation, will be Satan worshipers. After the rapture, when the church is gone, everyone worships the devil. Because if you don't, you get killed. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power to the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Verse 6, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. 7, It was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them, and power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. He has power over the entire world. Now, who are the saints here? Well, that's going to be the tribulation saints, those that were left behind at the rapture. Well, now they believe in Jesus. Now they're going to be overcome. They're going to be beheaded, and I think we'll see that here a little bit later. So during the tribulation, there will be some people that come to Jesus, come to Christ, but they'll have to die and give their, their life for Jesus and die. And the Bible says they're beheaded by the Antichrist for not taking the mark of the beast. All right, verse 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. The entire earth shall worship him. 
whose names are not written in the book of life, and the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he that had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So I think this is when the devil comes inside of the beast. And this is when the devil becomes what's called the son of perdition. And he rules for the last three and a half years. The man of sin, I believe, the first three and a half years. And then the last three and a half years, why it's Satan incarnate in flesh of that man of sin. He's the son of perdition. All right, I believe the Bible's pretty clear about that. Verse 13, And he doeth great wonder, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of all men. Verse 14, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by his sword and did live. Verse 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that all as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Three parts to the mark of the beast. Name, number, mark. Verse 18, Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six, which is six, six, six. So according to the Bible, this coming man, this specific man who is called the Antichrist, who is called the man of sin, and later the son of perdition, he will come into power in the tribulation period. When he comes into power, he's going to make the entire world worship him. What the Antichrist wants is all in the entire world under his thumb. He wants everyone under him, obeying him, serving him. He's a dictator. He wants everyone to do what he says upon penalty of death. Unless you follow him, you're dead. So he's going to make all these people take the mark, the mark of the beast. Now what happens to someone that takes the mark of the beast? Well, when Jesus comes back at Armageddon, he's going to kill everybody. He's going to put them all in hell to take the mark of the beast. So you should never take the mark of the beast. If you miss the rapture, whatever you do, don't take the mark of the beast. It's an instant death penalty. It's instant hell. Yes, you might live seven years, but you'll go to hell when Jesus comes back for taking the mark of the beast. Look at Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. I mean, it's pretty plain, isn't it? They go to hell. Hell is the wrath of God. And they're tormented and their smoke goes up forever. So don't take the mark of the beast. Now, people say, well, what if I'm a Christian? Christians, true Christians, true believers in Christ, by trusting in the blood atonement, will leave at the rapture. So I don't worry about whether I, Robert Breaker, am going to take the mark of the beast. I believe I'm out of here at the rapture. But it's after the rapture when the mark of the beast is given. So if you miss the rapture, the way to be saved is you're going to have to say, to the mark of the beast. You're going to have to say that to the Antichrist and say, no, I'm for Christ. And the Antichrist will say, well, I have all the power and all the authority in the world, so why don't you just die? Take them away, and they'll take you to a guillotine and chop your head off. And then you'll wake up in heaven. So I think it's better to get saved today. I'd hate to have to go through that and thank God that I have the promise of going to heaven at the rapture before this horrible time period of the Antichrist. However, I see that in the Bible the spirit of Antichrist is alive and well today and there are a lot of people who are working toward a goal of bringing in that Antichrist. So we can look at today and see clearly the agenda of the Antichrist in play as he's very shortly going to come to power. What's that mean? That means the rapture is going to take place first. So that means we're very close to the rapture. So now with this knowledge we must ask if the Antichrist is alive today. I think he probably is. I really believe that there is somewhere in the world the Antichrist. I don't know if anyone knows who he is, but I think he's alive. Some people say he's in Syria. Some people say he's in Russia. Some people say he's in America. I don't know, 
But I do believe that he's alive and well, the actual person, the man of sin. And he's going to come upon the scene soon. And that this Antichrist today is working toward the goal of world deno denomination. Well, yeah, I guess he's doing that too through ecumenicalism. But he's working toward his goal of world domination. And he's working behind the scenes. Yes, the Antichrist is clearly seen today, and we see the agenda. Now, if you know your Bible, then it's very easy to see what the agenda of the Antichrist is. So I'm going to write up here today the Antichrist agenda, and I'm going to show you what his agenda is. And I want you to get this, because this is how the Antichrist is going to take over power over the entire world. And that's what he wants. He wants to rule the entire world world. The first thing I want to say about the Antichrist agenda is the Antichrist agenda is anti-God. Anti the Antichrist agenda is anti-God. Anything that has to do with the true God, the devil hates. So what the Antichrist is doing today and has been doing for the last 2,000 years <laughs> is getting rid of the true God and trying to get people to not believe in who God is. He doesn't care if you believe in any God, as long as you don't believe in the true God. Now when he shows up, you're going to have to believe in God, and he wants you to believe in him. But the Antichrist agenda is to get rid of God, the true God, to get all people to stop believing in the true God. When you look at Satan, you know what you find? You find an evil person who hates God. And what the Antichrist is, he's Satan. And what Satan wants is to be God. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through uh, 15, we see the fall of Satan. And we clearly see that Satan is anti-God. He's against the true God. Isaiah 14, 12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Verse 13, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Most high. Satan is the first rebel. Satan is someone who says, no, it's all about me. And I don't want God to rule. I want to be God. I'm going to kick God out and set up my throne. I love verse 15. God responds to the devil and says, yet thou shalt be brought down to the sides of the pit. <laughs> no, Satan, you're not going to take over. No, Satan, you're not going to dethrone me. I'm God, and you're not. And you're going to go to hell. But yet God gives him seven years in the tribulation in which he's allowed to rule. And we clearly see that the Antichrist is someone who's against Jesus Christ. Well, who is Jesus Christ? We're told in the Bible Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. God is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, which means he is God. God manifest in the flesh. But the agenda of the Antichrist is to get rid of God. Now, you look around in the world today and you find for over a hundred years there's been all these different societies who are trying to get rid of God. It starts with evolution. The teaching of evolution is, well, we all came from monkeys, there's no God. Everything's just a cosmic accident. No, oh, no, we just somehow got here. What's the, the whole purpose of evolution? Get rid of God. You have communism. What is communism? It's an ideal, it's a teaching in which uh, you get rid of God. In communism, God is the state. Every communist regime that's ever existed on the face of the earth says, no, no Bibles, no God. They lock up all the Christians, they put them in jail, and they say, no, you can't worship openly. You can't believe in God. The state is God. You must worship the state. Communism has killed over 100 million people in just the last 100 years. Communism is anti-God and evil. And yet, you look at a certain party in America, and it's amazing that that party in America seems to be moving towards communism. We have in America the Democratic Party. I think it's so interesting. If you don't believe me, why don't you go Google it. But uh, several years ago, the Democratic National Convention go, voted God out of all their party documents. They said, we don't want to mention the name of God. We want to take God out. Well, that's the agenda of the Antichrist, to get rid of God. So isn't that interesting? And you ought to you ought to look at that and, and think about who to vote for next time you go vote. Uh, I wouldn't vote for someone that's anti-God. Um, Democrats, what are they? They're called progressives. What is progressive? Progressive is a socialist. So the Democratic Party has been taken over by socialists. Old Sanders, he's a socialist. Well, what is a socialist? 
Well, Lenin, a communist, said, and I quote, the goal of socialism is communism. So anybody that goes around saying, I'm a socialist, I'm a socialist, what are they saying? They're saying, I don't have enough guts to say what I really am. I'm really a communist. But I don't want to say that. So I'll say I'm somebody else. But what I am is somebody that secretly really wants communism. So what are they saying? They really want to get rid of God and the Bible and rule over you and become a dictator and make you worship them instead of God. Hmm, interesting. So you have these people in the world today that are anti-God, and a lot of them are communists or Satanists. We've seen in the last um, 20, 30, 40 years the rise of Satanism in America and in the world. And more and more people are saying, I follow Lucifer, I follow Satan, I don't believe in God, I don't believe in Jesus. What are they? They're part of the spirit of the Antichrist. What is Satanism? Satanism says this. If you ever study Satanism, Satanism says, do as thou wilt is the whole of the law. In other words, whatever you want to do, go do it. <laughs> Live your life. Smoke, drink, cuss, chew, fornicate, run with them that do. Live your life and do whatever the heck you want. And don't ever think about God. Why, that's the Antichrist agenda. The Antichrist wants you to live the most sinful, wicked life that you can live. Why does he want that? Because he doesn't love God and God's standards and God's morals and God's teachings. And so he wants people to, to turn against God. Well, I just read you in Isaiah that from the very beginning, Satan has been against God. So the agenda of Satan, or that old serpent, the dragon, and Satan, the Antichrist, is anything that's against God, prop it up, make it... Uh, uh, augment it, uh, teach it, preach it, get it out there. Anything that's anti-God. And that's the agenda of the Antichrist, is anti-God. Next thing I want to say, the agenda of the Antichrist is anti-gain. Anti-gain. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that God gave the world to us to enjoy. Do you know what the devil wants? He doesn't want you to enjoy. He wants you to be miserable. He wants you to be unhappy. He doesn't want you to get ahead. He wants you to be in poverty. He wants you to be impoverished. But what does the Bible say? Well, Proverbs 24, 27 says, Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thine house. God says, hey, go work in a field. Make money. Build a house. Enjoy your life, and do right. But the Antichrist doesn't want that. He wants to tax you to death. Uh, someone said many years ago, the power to tax is the power to destroy. When America was founded, it was founded by an anti-tax movement. <laughs> now, I'm not going to say I'm against taxes. I'm not. I pay my taxes. My dad always told me, he said, you can't fight a tank. My dad always said when they, when they demand taxes, he said, you pay it. <laughs> because they can come to your house in a tank and blow you up if you don't pay their extortion money. So I said, okay, dad, I'll pay my taxes. And I do. But you know what the devil wants? He wants to tax you to death. He wants you to be so poor that you can't enjoy life and that you're indebted to him. What does the Bible say? The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. And what we've seen over the last, I don't know how many years, is impoverished nations, and, and government control over people, taking more money in taxes, and people becoming poor, and not being able to have any gain, and to enjoy life. They're always working for the man, if you will. And that's what the devil wants. You said, but that's capitalism. Yes, God is a God that believes in capitalism. There's nothing wrong with working and making money and enjoying the fruits of your labor. That's what God wants. And by the way, it's, it's communists that are against God and, and capitalism. Isn't that interesting? Communists are not only against God, they're against capitalism. Two things that, that God thinks is, is great. God wants you to worship Him and God wants you to be blessed. There's nothing wrong with you having something and enjoying what you worked hard to get. But the Antichrist is very much against that. I don't have time to go into that. But let's look at another one. The Antichrist is anti-gender. Oh boy. <laughs> the Antichrist is anti-gender. One of the things the Antichrist wants to do is he wants confusion. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. But the Antichrist wants to confuse people, and he wants to confuse gender. Now, God set this thing up in a certain way in which God said man and woman will come together and be married and have children. And so in God's book, the Bible, it's man with a woman and a woman with a man in holy matrimony and coming together. And the Bible says 
in, in marriage, the bed is undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God shall judge. God doesn't want you to live a life of fornication. God doesn't want you to adulterate. God doesn't want you to partake of free love. That's fornication. That's sin. But the devil says, no, if it feels good, do it. Go, go sleep around with whoever you want. And then he goes even further, and he says, you know what? It doesn't matter what gender they are. Why? Why don't you just start experimenting? Why don't you go out and, and have sex with somebody of your own gender? And what the devil has done, and what the devil does, is he attacks the genders. And we're seeing in the world today some weird, weird stuff. We're seeing today some people that are talking about gender. I mean, it's all over the news. I can't. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22.5. I can't turn on the news without hearing this thing about gender and transgender. And they're trying to teach in universities and other places that gender isn't what you're born with, even though when you're born, the doctor puts on your birth certificate, man or woman, male or female. No, they tell you, no, it's up to you. You can decide if you just wake up one day and say, you know, I'm a man, but I don't want to be. Okay, from now on, I'm a woman. Is that what the Bible says? So I'm a man. Should I just wake up one day and, you know, I feel like a woman. I'm going to start wearing women's clothes. Or vice versa. Is that something that we should do? Well, let's look at the Bible. What does the Bible say? Deuteronomy 22, 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord. You see, the Lord's not transgender. The Bible does not talk about, well, it's okay to choose whichever gender you are. You are born what you are born as. That is the gender that God gave you. And you don't have a choice. You're supposed to stick with who you are. But all over the news, all over everything today, it's, oh, you bigot, you racist, you sexist, you devil, you, who are you to tell someone they can't pretend to be whatever they want to be? <laughs> I'm nobody, but I have a Bible, and God is somebody. Why, well, he's my creator, and he tells us how it's supposed to be. And God says, no, no, you don't go changing genders. God says, this is the way I did it, this is the way I made you, male and female created he them, the Bible says, and that's what you're supposed to be, is, is what you were born as. So we see a great push in this world today, and where does it come from? The devil. It's part of the Antichrist agenda to confuse the gender. Somebody told me there's something like 26 different genders today. And I think to myself, what? There's man, there's woman, that's it. How do you get 26 different something else's from that? Um, I was watching uh, the news the other day on Fox. I believe it was Tucker Carlson I was watching. It. And the question was, should children in school have a right to change their gender without telling their parents? That's the state of America today. Seriously? Kids deciding, today I'm going to be a girl and he's a man. Or vice versa. That's the world we live in. Gender confusion. Now, what is the Antichrist? Well, many people don't know what the Antichrist is. But did you know the Antichrist is a homosexual? In the Bible, the Bible tells us that the Antichrist is homosexual. Go to Daniel chapter 11 and verse 37. Daniel 11 is talking about the Antichrist. Daniel 11, 37, it says, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, right, he's anti-God, nor the desire of women. The Antichrist is a man, he's called the man of sin, so he is a man, but yet he doesn't want women. What does he want? He wants other men. You see, he's someone who, who doesn't care the way God set it up. He wants to sin. And the Bible says that a man's not supposed to sleep with a man or a woman with a woman. I don't have time to go into that. It's in Deuteronomy. I believe it's 17, 18, somewhere around there. Uh, Leviticus 18, I think. And it's also in Romans chapter 1. God says, no, you don't go mess with the genders. I made them the way I wanted them to be made. But part of the Antichrist agenda is to be anti-gender, to change all the genders. So every now and then, when you watch the news and you hear all these people, these social justice snowflake warriors, going around saying, Oh, I'm so offended because you called me a girl, even though they're a female, or vice versa, just mark her down. Oh, oh, that's part of the Antichrist agenda. That, that's the spirit of the Antichrist. Oh, now I understand. Because before, I'm like, why are people being like this and acting like this? Oh, now I know. Now I know. It's the Antichrist agenda. He's also anti-generation. What does that mean? He doesn't want you to have kids. Or he wants to take your kids. See, the Antichrist doesn't want you as a Christian to have children. Because he doesn't want more Christians in the world. Why? Because he's anti-Christ. That means he's anti-Christian. So what the Antichrist wants to do is he wants to try to keep you from having kids. But what does God say? 
Genesis 128, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. God says, hey, have as many kids as you can. Man and a wife come together, get married, it's fruit. The Bible says, happy is a man that has his quiver full. When you have children, it's a wonderful thing, and you're supposed to enjoy your children, and they're supposed to enjoy their parents. But the Antichrist says, no, no, we don't want that. We don't want that. The um, Communist China, look at Communist China. What has Communist China done? They have set a two-kid limit. I think they might have even set it now to a one-kid limit. I don't remember. But they, don't, they only allow you have so many children. And if you have more than that, then they kill that other child that's born or make you have an abortion. They put a limit on how many kids you can actually have. What is that? That's anti-Christ. That's against Christ. It's anti-generational. It's a depopulation agenda. It's wanting to get rid of people. And that's what the Antichrist wants. He wants to kill people. The Antichrist doesn't love you. The Antichrist doesn't love the creation of God, mankind. He wants to hurt them and confuse them in any way he can. You know what another one of the uh, goals of the Antichrist is? I'm just going to throw this one in for fun. The Antichrist is anti-gun. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I said it. The Antichrist is anti-gun. What the Antichrist wants is gun control. Why do you think the Antichrist would want gun control? Well, if his purpose and his goal and his agenda is worldwide uh, domination, then how can he take over the world if citizens are armed and can defend themselves? He can't. So he's got to take all that away in order to take over the entire world, and that's the agenda. We had a uh, shooting here in Florida, and I live in Florida, down in a place called Parkland, and they say 17 people died. And they're going around and they're trying to say, gun control, gun control, gun control. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, you know what, this is an agenda. I said, I wonder who's behind this agenda. Oh yeah, that's right, the Democrats, the Democrats, oh the socialists, the progressives, oh the, the communists. And I look at this and I look at communism and the history of communism and I say to myself, now what is it the communists do to take over countries? And I said, oh, well first thing they do is they take away a person's guns. And then the second thing they do is they take over a person's mind. In communism, you can't think the way you want. You have to think the way the state says. There's a term that came from communism called political correctness. You aren't allowed to think or speak as you wish. You have to think politically and correctly think and correctly speak. Kind of like 1984, the book. So, under communism, you can't be free to think or speak your mind, and you can't be free to have a gun. Well, what does the Constitution of the United States of America say? Freedom of speech, a freedom, right to bear arms. If you go to the Declaration of Independence, if you go to the Constitution, why? It says that these rights come from God. So these are our God-given rights to have guns and to speak our mind and not be censored. Well, if the Antichrist is against God, he's Antichrist, he's anti-God, Oh, no wonder he wants to take your guns, because God said you can have them. You say, where is that in the Bible? Well, God told Peter, get a sword. God allows for men to be armed in the Bible. In the Bible, there is self-defense. You have a right to defend yourself from others that would do you harm. Now, what I'm seeing is this whole shooting down in Florida. I'm seeing the communists going to get whatever they want. And it's really sad to me to see the president and other people cowering down to these communists and giving in to their demands. The old saying the communists have is they say two steps forward, one step back. And so what communists always do is to get their agenda, they'll go two steps forward. They will do their best to get as much as they want. And then people say no, and they say okay, and they step back one. They went two steps forward and then took one back. And then two steps forward and one back. And then two steps, you know what? They're getting closer and closer and closer to their agenda. And you just sit there thinking, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. And the next thing you know, you're dead. They kill you. They put you in a concentration camp. So I'm watching the news and this, this anti-gun control. And everybody's going, no, oh, they're not going to take guns in America. They'll never take that. And I say, okay. So that's, that's the first step that they're trying to do. But then I'm seeing that they're talking about mental illness. And they're starting to say, why, well, the government ought to have the power to declare you mentally ill and then lock you up. That's communism in a nutshell. Do you realize that if you have the power to declare someone insane and to lock them up, then you have the power to take over? Imagine that power in the hands of someone who's corrupt. Someone who, who sets up a wicked government and that says, now anyone that doesn't agree with me and my party, why, as far as I'm concerned, they're crazy. They're mentally insane. Lock them up. Can you imagine? 
So the communists are coming out on all fronts, and they don't care if they get gun control. If they get the control over your mental illness, over your health, and to declare you mental ill or not, then they can lock you up and take your guns. It's a twofold attack by the communists, and nobody's smart enough to see it. And what I see is the Antichrist agenda. The devil coming to take away what you have, so that after the rapture, he has the whole world under his thumb, and no one can fight against him. There'll be no guns. The Antichrist is also anti-good. Anything that's good and righteous and just and holy and wonderful, that's God. God is righteous. God is just. God is good. Well, the Antichrist hates good. So anything that's bad is exalted by the Antichrist. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Why? Kind of like Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood exalts everything evil and wicked and ungodly. Gone are the days of, of clean movies that teach you good moral doctrine. No, no, it's all about evil, wicked, ungodliness, nudity, sex, uh, killing, revenge. It's all the bad things that are exalted today. What does God say? Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20, God says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. It says, For light that, for, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them. God says, woe unto you that say the things that are bad are good and the things that are good are bad. But yet, that's what we see in our world today. The whole world is starting to preach against Christianity and say, Christians are bad, Christians are evil, Christians are ungodly, we don't like, and they're wicked themselves. Why would a person say that Christianity is bad? The only reason I can think of that a person would not want Christianity is because they are so sinful that they don't want to think that the Christians might be right, and that someday you'll stand before God and give account of your sins. So they don't want to think their sins, and they don't want to think about the judgment, so they say, well, that must be bad. <laughs> and so they attack Christianity. And that's the Antichrist agenda, to attack anything good. You go to Hollywood, and you start looking at what's taking place in Hollywood, and you have all these men that are, I think it's called the Me Too movement, or something like that, and they say there's all these men that, that told these women, if you want to be in my movie, you've got to sleep with me, and you've got to do this. And there's all these evil, wicked rapists, and child molesters, and things like that in Hollywood. And what do you see? You see other Hollywood actors saying, oh, well, they're just so great. I stand with them. You stand with the child molester? You stand with the person that's raped people. You stand with that person. You're evil. You're, you're calling good evil and evil good. I don't stand with them. I stand against it. I'm not going to get into names, but you know who they are. Every day, more and more come out. Oh, this guy, he did this and this and this. And it's just sad. It's just sad. Well, the other thing I want to say about the Antichrist agenda is the Antichrist is anti-gospel. The Antichrist is anti-gospel. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. There's one thing that the Antichrist hates more than anything else, and that is the gospel. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 and 3, the Bible says these words. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 and 3, but have renounced, uh, yeah, 3 and 4, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You know what the devil, the God, the little g of this world, Satan, the Antichrist is doing? He's doing everything he can to blind your eyes to the gospel of salvation. Why? Why is the Antichrist against the gospel of Christ? Because if you believe the gospel, you'll get saved and you'll go at the rapture. If you go at the rapture, well then guess what? That's one less person that the Antichrist gets to rule over. And the Antichrist is an egotistical dictator. He wants to rule over the entire world. He wants as many people as he can to be under his thumb and kissing his feet and doing what he says. So he doesn't want people to get saved and leave at the rapture. Well, that'd be less people that he can rule over in the tribulation. So the Antichrist says, no, no, I don't want you to hear the gospel. Well, guess what? I'm going to give you the gospel. We just had a famous so-called evangelist die. And the evangelist's name was Billy Graham. And I was glued to the TV for the last couple of days because I want to see, alright, what's going on? You see, this fellow Billy Graham, he's beloved of the world. 
and everybody on TV, oh, beloved Billy Graham, this wonderful pastor, he's America's pastor, look at their Catholic priests coming out of the woodwork praising this man, and I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at my Bible. And the whole world loves and praises Billy Graham, and then I look at my Bible, and Jesus said to Christians, the world will hate you. And I'm saying, the Bible says the world will hate you, and now the world loves this guy? And I'm scratching my head going, I don't, I don't get it. And all over the news, it's all, and Jim Billy Graham, that great preacher who preached the gospel, a gospel preacher, who preached the gospel, and they all mention the word gospel. But not once in five, six, seven days have I heard anyone on any news program anywhere say, and now here is the gospel that Billy Graham preached. It's 1 Corinthians 15. No, they don't say that. They give lip service to the gospel. And they praise this man who they say preached the gospel, but they won't tell you what the gospel is. Why? Because the Antichrist won't permit it. The Antichrist doesn't want you to know that the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. So you ought to read it. The gospel is how that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. It was for our sins that Jesus died on the cross. And he shed his blood. And it's through the blood we find forgiveness of sins, through faith in the blood of Christ. So the agenda of the Antichrist is very clear to see. The Antichrist is against anything that God is for. So whatever God said... The Antichrist says, no. And so it's very easy. So whatever's being pushed or propagated or, or taught by the world today is against God and the Bible. And the reason it's against God and the Bible is because the spirit of the Antichrist is working in this world to bring in the Antichrist. Now I'm going to close with this. I've got three more things that I want to say. How his agenda works. How the Antichrist works agenda works. I want you to see how it works. I've shown you what it is. All right, This is how it works. And when you understand how it works, then it becomes easier to not be a part of it. First thing that they do is the devil works by gossip. You see, what the devil does is he wants to gossip. What is gossip? Well, it's spreading lies about people. So what the devil does is he goes out of his way to lie about people that are true, that are righteous, that are just. He exalts the wicked, and he attacks and puts down the just. Let's go to John chapter 8, verse 44. You see, the Antichrist is Satan, or the devil. Well, John chapter 8, verse 44, we read, You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father he will do. He is a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The Antichrist is the father of lies. And so the way the agenda of the Antichrist works is lie, 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 and then get people to believe the lie. Why, it's almost like this book right here, the plan of the Democratic Party and the progressive socialist. This book is called Rules for Radicals by Saul Alinsky. You ever read that? Uh, Hitler Clinton says that this is one of her favorite books. And the Democratic Party says, why, this is our play, playbook. This is our rule book for politics. We follow rules for radicals. Oh, really? Well, well who was this book dedicated to? Why, Saul Alinsky, in the very beginning of this book, says that he dedicates this book to, why, well, guess who? <laughs> Lest we forget at least an over-the-shoulder acknowledgement to the very first radical from all our legends, mythology, and history, and who is to know where mythology leaves off and history begins, or which is which, the first radical to man who rebelled against the establishment and did it so effectively that he at least won his own kingdom, Lucifer. All right? Here is the book, Rules for Radicals. The man that wrote this book says, now I dedicate this to Lucifer. Let's don't forget him. Yeah, he's the one we follow. Why, who's that? The Antichrist. So your modern, democrat, progressive, socialist, communist party is the party of Antichrist. Is the party of being in favor of the agenda of the Antichrist, which is what? Bringing in communism. Huh. Why don't people know this? Why don't people understand that? Another thing that the Antichrist wants and has been doing is genocide. What is genocide? Murder. Killing people. John 8, 44. 
Not only is he the father of lies, but it says he was a murderer from the beginning. So the Antichrist hates people, and he wants to murder people. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. So when the Antichrist takes over and gets in power, the Antichrist is going to devote a lot of his time to killing anyone who doesn't go along with him. So it's all about getting in power by lies. Remember what we read earlier about how he, by lying wonders, gets into power? Then once he's in power, it's all about killing all those that, aren't against, that are against him and not in favor of him. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4 talks about, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. These are people who worship not, it says here, which had not worshipped the beast, nor his image, nor had received. So people in the tribulation who say no to the Antichrist, they're beheaded. Mass genocide by this dictatorial devil that takes over the entire world. He kills anyone who doesn't go along with what he said. And he's done that all throughout history. You go back to the time of Jesus. When Jesus was born, the devil said, uh-uh, I don't want Jesus to come into this world. So the devil got Herod, a man who was in, in charge during that time, and he said, Herod, go kill everybody. Just kill them all. And that's the Antichrist agenda. Kill them all that don't go along with you. In Matthew chapter 2, and verse 16, look what it says. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise man, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which they was diligently acquired of the wise man. Herod murdered all the children of Israel during the time of Jesus. Thankfully, Jesus was saved. Genocide. What is the agenda of the Antichrist? Kill them. Kill them all. If they don't agree with you. Now that's sick. It's not sick. The final agenda of the Antichrist is globalization. Globalization. What do you mean by that? The Antichrist wants to take over the world. It's called the New World Order. You see, the New World Order is just that. It's to order the world together under the Antichrist. The New World Order is not a Christian organization. It is an organization in which people are working to bring in the Antichrist. And that's what they're doing. Revelation chapter 12, what does the Antichrist do when he comes? Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The desire of the Antichrist is to deceive the world. See, he wants the whole world to believe his lies. And he'll kill those that don't. And then we read in chapter 13, um, Revelation chapter 13, verse 12. Well, 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 verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Look at verse 12. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the beast. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the power of those miracles. Um saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. Uh, verse 16, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark. The Antichrist agenda is world domination under Satan. That's the agenda of the Antichrist. So all the governments of the world that are working together to bring about a global one world order, or new world order, who are they working for? Satan. And this new world order, this global order of putting all the different world religions, world nations, world states together into one world, that's all for the one world agenda of bringing in the greatest liar the world's ever known, putting him in power to kill anyone that's against him, so that the whole world would be under him, Satan. That's the Antichrist agenda. So the Antichrist agenda is world domination. But guess what? This is where it gets good. The Antichrist doesn't get it all forever. You see, there are a lot of people today that have sold out to the devil. They've sold their soul to Satan, and they say, I will work for this agenda. I will work for the Antichrist. Because they see that this is how it's going to turn out. They say the New World Order is going to come no matter what. And so they say, you know what? I'm going to sell out to it. And I'm going to join it so I can be with the Antichrist and rule with him. Well, i got, I got to tell you something. Guess what? He doesn't win. You see, he might have the whole world for about seven years, but 
But that's about it. Then comes Jesus at Armageddon and defeats the Antichrist. So if you're on the side of the Antichrist and you're working right now for the Antichrist agenda, you're on the losing side. Oh, you might win for a little bit, but you're going to end up in hell on the losing side. Some people say, well, Brother Breaker, I just don't understand how God could allow the devil to take over the whole world. I just don't see why God would do that. And you know what I say? I say, well, have you been reading your Bible? <laughs> because I see why. There is a reason why God allows the devil to take over the whole world. And he will. He will. The Bible prophesies a one world government, a one world order in which the devil rules. There's a reason for it. Well, before I show you that reason in Zephaniah 3, 8, let's go to Revelation 16, 13. Revelation 16, 13, look at this. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs, why well, there's the spirits of the Antichrist, come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. 14, these are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Look at verse 16, and to gather them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. What the Antichrist is going to do is he's going to be so crazy, he's going to be so power hungry, he's going to be so mentally insane because all egotistical dictators become insane, that he's going to go with all the army of the whole world and he's going to try to attack the people of God, Israel, the nation of Israel. And the Bible tells us that the reason that God lets the devil take over the whole world is for this purpose right here. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 8. Zephaniah, right before the book of Haggai. Zephaniah 3, 8 says, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all mine fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my je jealousy. Jesus Christ says, I'm letting the devil take over the world. Now, he's not taking my people. I'm taking them out at the rapture of the church. But I'm going to let the devil take over the world. I'm going to let all these nations come together and assemble. Isn't it funny that the United Nations, when they come together, they call it the assembly? <laughs> God says, let the United Nations assemble together. He says, when they all come together in one place, Armageddon, I'm going to come in, I'm just going to destroy them all. That's the reason why I see God allowing the Antichrist to take over the world. So that God can get all his enemies together in one place at one time, and then just go, and they're all dead all at one time. I mean, you couldn't plan it any better than to get every single enemy of yours in one place at one time and then wipe them all out. And that's what God does. So God allows the Antichrist. He's allowed the Antichrist to be working for the last 2,000 years, the Spirit. He's allowing people to sell their souls to Satan today to work for the Antichrist. And He's going to allow a man for seven years to take over the entire earth. But God is smarter than the Antichrist. And God says, the reason I'm doing this is because when I come back at Armageddon, I'm wiping them all out. I'm going to step on all of them and finish them right then and there. So this is the Antichrist's agenda. The Antichrist's agenda is to bring in the Antichrist. Now, question, whose side are you on? You're either on the side of Jesus or you're on the side of Satan. If you're on the side of Jesus then you get out at the rapture. And you see, a lot of people say, well, we believe that there's going to be a new world order, and we're going to fight the new world order. People say, do you believe in fighting the new world order? You know what I say? I believe there's only one way to fight the new world order, and that's the spiritual battle. I don't tell people, get your guns and go fight. No, I don't believe in fighting the physical battle. Paul says our weapons are not a carnal. I believe the best way to fight the new world order is to preach the gospel. Give them the very thing that the Antichrist is trying to keep them from hearing. Because it's the truth. You see, he he's focuses in on lies, but the gospel is the truth. If a guy gets the gospel and gets saved, that's one less person that the Antichrist is going to be allowed to rule over in the tribulation. That's the way to win against the New World Order, and get saved. So I have a question for you. Are you saved? Do you know the Antichrist agenda? Well, I presented it to you. I tried to make it as plain as I could. Now that you know the agenda, what are you going to do? 
Well, I would suggest you get saved. And then after you're saved, I would suggest that you then take the gospel and win people to Jesus Christ because that's one less person when they get saved that the Antichrist will be able to rule over in his kingdom. I hope you can recognize the Antichrist agenda. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I hope you get saved. I thank you for watching. Please come back every week. We'll be here. New sermon in English and Spanish until the rapture. God bless. Have a nice day.